He awoke to the sounds of morning birds and was full of praise. He opened the door to let the light in. Everything was still wet. The sun glistening off the puddles. Everything felt renewed, restored, returned to the void and reborn. He breathed in deep. Morning air, reminiscent of spring following the final thought. He performed his whole practice of yoga poses while the coffee percolated. He made pancakes and shared them with the dog. He prepared a small day pack with two bottles of water, a portion of dried fruit, a rain poncho in case the sky loosed its falling wrath once more, his freshly sharpened knives, some clothesline, a battery headlamp for coming back in the dark. Guessing the time to be in the nine o'clock hour, he fastened the dog to a run and headed south into the woods. At the ravine, the river was higher than he had imagined. Rushing waters splashed up and over the makeshift log bridge. He had another day to wait for the waters to recede. Stepping carefully onto the slick and saturated logs, he shuffled slowly. Having nearly crossed, and already done so in his mind, he slipped and went down hard on, hard and quick on his hands. He saved himself from taking a plunge, only soaking his knees and cuffs of his sleeves. He crawled in this way onto the muddy bank and looked back over his troubled crossing. He proceeded on through the forest to that beautiful maple grove with its tall, smooth barked sentinels. The light came down brightly through the bare limbs above, over rare leaves, to the colorful yet sodden earth below. Through this he traversed, past the rusting farm equipment and its chaotic old overgrowth past the empty husk of the riding truck, from the trees to the briar field. Once clear of the tangled acres, he saw the old barn and the new loss of shingles from the roof. He greeted the chickens in their pen with mimicry at their balking sounds, continue on to the peeling farmhouse. He reached the back and ascended the weathered stone steps. He knocked hard on the wooden door, making the small square windows rattle. Through the streaked panes, he saw the old man approach, mug in hand, the same flannel shirt as last time. This time, when he opened the door, he invited the younger man in. Inside, the place was well ordered, but the thickness of dust on the lamps and shelves, the dark smudges on the doors and archways, these all suggested it long forgotten the, a woman's touch, or any call to urgency about appearances. He noticed the floor was well swept, and reasoned this to be a loosening activity for his arthritis. The old man poured him a cup of coffee without asking, and the two sat at a large table of solid vintage craftsmanship. At the far end of the table was a pile of officious letters and grocery circulars. The walls were a faded marigold, flaked away in places where the plaster crumbled, revealing the hundred-year-old horsehair which bound it together. A dust, of a dust and cobweb covered sorry, dust and cobweb covered crucifix rested above the arch of what was decided to be the head of the room. An old rotary phone hung on the wall, surrounded by a dark halo of handprints. Below it, a simple wooden chair and a small square table supporting an electric lamp and a sorely abused phone book. A single picture hung on an empty wall. Inside the beveled wood frame was a much younger version of the old man with a full head of dark hair. The face displayed a sternness which seemed lost now in his faded eyes and sloughing skin. With him in the photo, before a studio backdrop of, autumn, of an autumn scene, was a short, plump woman of timeless attraction, a gold cross nestled in her bosom. He looked back to the old man, who had been watching him inspect the picture silently. Your wife was very beautiful. The old man smiled, nodding his head slightly, then looked down into his coffee. The younger sipped from his as well. Coffee was much better than his own, rich and full body. Good coffee, the younger added, to break the silence. You know, the old man picked up, they say coffee could go extinct this century. Coffee, you'd never think it. Now as the younger stared into his cup, and the pair returned to silence in their thoughts. How'd you hold up to that storm out there? She sure was blown. Ha! <laughs> that she was. No trees came down in my head, and that's about all I could ask for. The tough part was the cabin fever. I spent an afternoon fishing in the rain just to get out of the hut. You catch anything? A little trout. Not much to look at, but it sure tasted good, like the river. This brought a bridge. This brought a big, crooked, toothed grin to the old man's maw. Any news from New York? I've been thinking about this woman in Jersey City. Not much I'd call news, just a lot of pictures showing that it's all still there, just a little worse for it. Death toll is only about 50 in a million. Chances are your friend is just fine. 
Then they heard the creaking complaints of the old staircase. A young man in the early twenties with shaggy blonde hair shaved to the sides passed through the room without looking up from a tiny glowing screen. From the archway to the kitchen, he could be seen taking juice from the fridge and drinking it from the carton. Benji, say hello. This fellow's gonna work on the stuff I've been on you all year for, seeing as you can't seem to be bothered with any of it. Hey, the kid said without looking up, passing back through the room and heading up the stairs, creaking each step. That kid's about as useless as art to a blind man. Your grandson? The old man nodded. Well, those chickens aren't going to kill themselves. The younger stood up suddenly, surprising the old. You should find anything you need out in the barn. Keep two of them big boys for next year's batch. You can keep that old rooster for yourself. He might make a good soup, but the meat's too tough for anything else. The younger man finished his coffee in one gulp and headed for the door. He let himself out and crossed the yard, calling to the birds as he passed. At the barn, he pushed open the large, stubborn door. The light pierced the musty dark. Among the cluttered shelves of the, and workbench, he collected a large pot and an old butcher block. He put these in a modern plastic wash tub and dragged it to the middle of the floor. In a corner, he found a metal cauldron and tripod. Leaving the tripod where it stood, he hefted the cauldron in both arms and duck-walked it to the stone fire pit outside. He returned for the tripod, then the wash tub. He gathered fallen sticks beneath the trees in the yard, split wood from a large stack near the house, and when he was done, 